Hi guys, welcome back. Today I have a white rose that I painted in watercolour to show you. If you're new here, I'm Louise DeMassey and I post watercolour tutorials like this one every week. Now I've condensed the content of this tutorial for YouTube, but if you'd like to see the full two hour tutorial, including the background, it's available on my Patreon site. My patrons are able to download the reference photo, the line drawing and a copy of my completed painting so that they can paint along with me. The link is in the description below. This is the reference photo that I used for the rose painting and this is one of the roses that grows in my garden. My rose is painted on Ash's watercolour board so it's pretty thick and I didn't need to stretch it. I always recommend if you use normal watercolour paper I always recommend that you stretch it before you use it. I'm just using my Maestro brush here to paint some brown ochre onto the cup of the rose. Now I'm just going to drop some Windsor Lemon just down low in that area, just to give it a bit of a glow down there. And now I'm painting some brown ochre up in this area here. So in this little area here, I'm going to put some brown ochre there as well. So after I wash in a few areas of brown ochre, I then switch to my liner brush and some burnt sienna and I just start to add some detail with that. So here I'm using my Maestro brush and I'm just painting some very, very pale brown ochre onto the petals. Just painting on the dry paper, just with watery paint. So the colour's really light, there's hardly any pigment mixed into the water. So I just want to mix up some grey now. So I've got some ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna and I'm just going to mix the two together just to make a pale grey, sort of a bluey grey colour. I've just got a big mop brush here that I'm using. So now I use my liner brush just to paint that grey onto some of the petals. And this just creates a lovely contrast between the warmth of the brown ochre and the cool grey. So here I'm working on damp paper, just with the grey that I mixed up. And now I'm just softening the edge of the paint with my damp brush. And then before that paint dries, I just run some Windsor Violet along the edge with my liner brush. Now I want to wet just a bit further down the petal but this time I'm on the other side of the petal. So I want the outer edge to be white and I want the inner edge to be slightly darker. So this moisture in the paper keeps all my paint edges soft. So I run the grey mix along the front edge of the petal and the water on the paper just causes the paint to bleed across the surface. I want the outer edge to remain white. And then I can do the same thing with this grey colour here. I can drop in some Windsor Violet as well. So that just blends with the grey on the paper and just adds interest to the colour. And this gives me the opportunity just to clean up that edge along the front. 
now I want to paint a really pale shadow along the edge where the two petals touch one another. So if I just wet the surface with some water first, and then I can come in with the grey mix, and I just run it along the edge of the petal in front, and the water causes the paint just to bleed across the surface of the paper, and that keeps all my paint edges soft. So this helps to form the edge of the petal in front because I'm using the white of the paper as the white parts of the rose. This shadow along here just helps to separate the petals from one another. Now I'm just using the paint that's on the paper and I'm just pulling it towards the outer edge of the petal. And then I've dropped in some of the Windsor Violet too with this brush. Just while the paint was still damp. And I can tidy up the edge if I need to. On this large petal here, you can see the water on the paper that I've put on. And now I'm just running some of the grey paint just along the outer edge. And I'm just letting the water disperse the pigment. So the paint just flows across the water and it just softly blends over the top of the, the edge of the rose. This is still the grey that I mixed, but I've put some more blue in it. So that's the ultramarine blue. Now I'm starting to paint in some of the cast shadows that are on the petals. Again, I'm just using the grey that I mixed up, but I'm going to drop in some Windsor Lemon because I can see a pale lemony colour on my reference photo that's just reflected in the shadow. Cast shadows are an important part of the painting. They help to create the illusion of depth. And shadows are never just one colour. It's always important to look carefully at a shadow and see what other colours you can see in there. I like to add several colours into my shadows just to make my painting more interesting. So now I'm dropping in some Windsor Violet onto that damp paint. So I've just wet the edge of this outer petal with some water and now I'm using my liner brush to run some of the grey paint that I mixed up along the edge. So just by making the edge slightly darker, this just helps to curve the petal so that it doesn't look quite so flat. And this small area here is in shadow so I can just paint that straight onto the dry paper. There's an interesting shape to cast shadow over here on this petal as well. So I just paint some water on the shadow first. I want to work on damp paper to do this because I've got a few different colours that I want to drop into the shadow. So the first colour that I use is the grey that I've mixed. That's the main colour of the shadow. And before this colour dries, I'll drop in the other colours. So now I've got some ultramarine blue and I'm just dropping that onto the damp grey paint and that just blends with the grey. And all these colours will dry lighter when the paper's actually dry. They always look darker when the paint's wet. And now I'm using Windsor Violet and I'm dropping that onto the damp paper as well. On this large petal down the front of the rose, I just want to work on damp paper here. I'm just going to run some of my grey that I've mixed up along the edge of this one.
keeps all my paint edges soft. Now I'm dropping in some of the ultramarine blue along that grey edge. Now I've got some of the grey paint and I'm just painting some lines over the surface of the petal and because the water's on the paper that just keeps those lines soft and fuzzy which is what I want. I don't want hard sharp lines on the rose. I've got to make sure that there's just enough water to make the paint go fuzzy and not too much water that the paint just goes everywhere. There's another cast shadow here that I've just painted in with the grey and now I'm dropping some sap green onto that grey paint. So when I've painted all the rose in I just come back and I have a look and I can see which areas I need to darken and add some more paint over. So at the moment I'm just painting over some areas and making them a bit darker. So down in here I need to increase the colour. This is just burnt sienna. So this contrast makes a huge difference to a painting and just makes it much more interesting for the viewer to look at. There's a few areas on the rose where the petals separate and you can see down into the rose. So at the moment I'm just putting some burnt sienna on there. But I'm going to place some sap green over this before it dries just to cool it down and that'll make that area just recede down into the rose. So this is burnt sienna. And now I'm putting some sap green over the top just to cool it down. Cool colours tend to recede whereas warmer colours tend to advance towards you. So I want these to recede down into the rose. Thanks for watching and thank you also to all my patrons. Your support helps me bring these tutorials to you every week. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my tutorials and I'll see you next week with a very special tutorial.